All right, we are now recording, so you're on, Corinne. Perfect. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. I'm really excited to be here and talk to you guys about Undershield. Um, with that, we'll get started. Um, so really quickly, um, just some field support. Uh, I know there are a few of you from all over. I obviously am the Hawaiian Islands rep, like Kara said. Um, but depending on where you're located, um, you can reach out to your prospective rep. Um, I know I had some people join from Florida, so that might either be Eric um, or JB, depending on who you work with or um, who you can reach out to. Um, this map is on our website as well as all their contact info, so you can get all that information there. Uh, a quick overview of what we're going to talk about today. Uh, I'm going to quickly dive into some ArborJet background. Um, for those of you who may not know, uh, I'm going to talk specifics on what Bungie Shield is, as well as go into the details of what mold, mildew, fungus, and algae is and the differences between those. Um, I'm going to show you guys some good application locations where this product might work. Besides some good places to apply the product, I'll also be talking about the application method of the product, as well as I'm gonna let Rick Irwin from Ecolodel talk about the research and um, some of the testing that's been done in the past. I'll show you guys I'll show you guys some before and after photos from Hawaii, as well as talking about the size, application rate, and investment with the product. Okay, so good, right? Okay, um, so ArborJet, just to dive into the background of ArborJet, um, ArborJet was established in 2000. Um, it's a privately held company. So um, this year, 2020, is our 20th anniversary, which is pretty exciting. You can see on the left there our little logo for that. Um, in 2018, we acquired controlling interests of Ecologel and BioPro. Um, and so this product, Fungishield, is actually falls underneath of that, um, uh, underneath of Ecologel's products. Um, we support a broad range of professional markets, um, anywhere from nurseries to golf to resort to retails. I'm sure some of you know and have seen. Um, we design, develop, and manufacture our own products, um, and we're always working to have the next best, best thing on the market, always looking to improve what we're doing. Um, we are very committed to being environmental responsibility and we have high engineer products that cover everything from soil to crown and everything in between. So with that, give me a second to minimize this, here we go. Okay, so diving into the actual product and why everyone came to this presentation. Fungi Shield, what is it? Uh, it is a effective long-term clear protective barrier against the adhesion of mold, mildew, fungus, and algae. So a barrier, keep in mind that that word is very important. It's a barrier product. Um, so in order to protect against these, these organisms, this mold, mildew, fungus, and algae, um, we are depriving those organisms of the three things that they need to live, which is food, water, and a place to live. So food for these organisms is sunlight. We'll start here where it's a, uh, where we're depriving the organisms of food, uh, water and a place to hold on to. Uh, and so that's what's keeping them from building up on the surface. Uh, it's resistance to weathering and UV degradation uh, provides a long-term film that lasts for five years plus. Uh, it's applied to roofs, walls, sidewalks, patios, pool decks, uh, just about any type of hard surface that will accept the adhesion of a latex-based type paint material, even though this is clear. So if, it's, uh, if it can adhere to there, it can uh, prevent the buildup of the fungus and algae. Uh, and it is a water-based solution. Uh, it is applied as a milky white substance that then dries clear. Uh, 
Uh, drying time is one to two hours to the touch, 18 to 24 hours uh, to walk on. Sometime within that period of time, it begins to uh, become uh, water resistant. Uh, you may see some penetration of water if it gets on there, but it's not run, it's not completely wet in the surface. And given time, it will reject more and more of those droplets until you don't see them penetrating. And the main thing that we want people to understand is it's not a fungicide and it's not an algicide, and it does not contain any fungicides or algicides. Uh, its function is purely mechanical as a barrier treatment. Yeah, we see it. The slide has changed. Uh, Corinne, do you want to attempt to, to continue with what you have uh, here for, for the different uh, mildew and fungus, or do you want me to continue on this for you? Sure. I'm going to take out my headphones, and maybe that will help. Any better? Yes, yes. Better. it's clear from my side. So I'm going to talk about the difference between these things that we say fungus shield um, protects against. So I'm actually going to start with my third bullet point here. Fungus it describes any of these three things. So fungus, mold, mildew, algae, or fungus. Um, any of these spore producing organisms that feed on that organic matter. Mold itself, you tend to see in those damp, poorly ventilated conditions. Typically black, it can come in many colors, but you see it black. So if you look on that picture on the right under that windowsill, you see that black kind of forming on the siding of that house. Mildew, um, when you typically think of mildew in this field, you, you think of maybe powdery mildew, something that shows up on a plant. However, because fungus shield is not used on plants, um, you can also find it in areas like, you know, deck or your patio furniture. Um, you can see it grows in a flat pattern. Um, the picture on the right hand side of that white kind of line um, is a picture from someone's deck. Um, like I said, fungus describes all of these things. And the algae is a moss-like plant form that also thrives in that moisture and that sunshine. So you know, you've all seen that kind of green stuff, slippery, that forms on these surfaces. Um, this takes a little while to advance, but I'm hoping you all can still hear me. I really apologize for the technical difficulties I'm having. Okay. Um, some good places to apply. So on the left-hand picture, this is a picture of a bench in a greenhouse. Um, you get that buildup of that algae, that that fungus on maybe your tables um, because you're constantly going from um, wet to dry and it has that perfect condition for that substance to grow. Another place, center picture that might be applicable to a few of you are sports fields. Um, I should say sports ter um, concrete hard surfaces. So this is a tennis court, you know, maybe basketball courts where you're constantly having to power wash and prevent those areas from getting slippery. Um, on the right hand side, you can see this is another picture under a windowsill or a siding. Um, this is a, a big thing for Hawaii specifically, um, but we tend to have a lot of those air conditioning units in the windows. And with that, you get a lot of that moisture and dripping on the outside of that. So you have that build up there. Okay, another picture is which maybe is a big thing for all of you. I know my parents just did their um, sidewalks outside their house, um, but that is one area that tends to um, get this buildup on it. And you can see on the left-hand picture, somebody's you know, in the process of starting that power washing technique to get all that algae and fungus off of that surface. So these are just a few examples. I'm sure you guys already have things kind of running in your mind of where this product might be applicable to you, to you guys, but that's some examples of that. In terms of the application method, um, this product can be brushed on, uh, rolled on, or sprayed on. And you can see in the left-hand picture there, um, he is spraying that product on. Um, a gallon of this product typically covers 200 to 300 square feet. 
Um, and that might change depending on some factors like how um, porous your surface is. You know, if you have a really smooth surface, you might be able to get that full 300 square feet of coverage. But if something's a little bit more porous and you need more um, coat, coating on that area to get a full covered area, then that might be back down to maybe the 200. So it kind of depends on the surface you're on. Um, in terms of run streaks and excess material, in order to not have it dry with the white staining and have it to dry clear, you want to follow up your initial application typically with that brush. So if you can see in this picture, he's, he's spraying the product on, but you can see the areas where some spots are heavier than others. So maybe in a circumstance like this, it would be better to follow up with that brush. That way he gets that even monolithic coating of the product. Okay, so I'm gonna let Rick take over again. He's gonna talk to you guys about the um, research and testing. Um, and like I said, although we only um, purchased controlling interest of Ecologel in 2018, this product has been with them for years and there has been research and trials done um, for many years. And, and Rick's gonna go into those, those details. So Rick, it's all you. And as Corinne said, that there was years of research and development in this product that were done uh, first by a chemist in Australia who developed the product. Uh, he was known at, for his worldwide development of anti-graffiti coatings for buildings. That, and he was able to keep paint, lipstick, magic marker, and things like that from sticking to building surfaces. So he looked at the way he had created that product and uh, was able to... Can you hear me? Yes. I lost the connection there. Um, he was able to take that technology and look at what algae and fungus needed to adhere to the building and were able to modify his anti-graffiti technology to form a barrier that would protect these organisms from adhering to the surface. So we took the technology from what he had developed and brought it to the University of Florida, which was doing some other research for us on some of our other technologies. And they were having to pressure clean their sidewalks inside the greenhouse uh, at least once every three or four months. Um, so they wanted to test this product. So we did certain sections of the greenhouse for them and these panels that you see on the left-hand side. And those panels were put underneath the benches, so they were constantly getting a drip of the water and of the nutrients that are coming off of the plants. And what they found was that they had eliminated all pressure washing um, and at the very most had to just go in there and hose down periodically to get dirt and debris off the sidewalks. So they proved how well the product worked. And um, I think at the next slide, you'll see a, uh, one of their letters uh, to us. Uh, but uh, this letter was after 15 months where they were saying they have no longer had to go in and use the green shield products that they were for cleaning and, and could just hose it down. Um, they have a subsequent letter to us that, that said that the product lasted uh, more than five years uh, and that they still were able to just basically hose down the surface. So it's performing the way the guarantee is stating, which is that we're preventing the adhesion so that if their material does grow on there at all, it'll come off normally with rainfall or with just the light hosing off. And the first slide here is uh, this in Bradenton, Florida. This was a uh, customer, uh, actually a distributor who wanted to see if the product would function for roofs in Florida, feral tile. And so he cleaned his entire roof and he did that section up in the right hand corner. Um, and what you're seeing is the picture after three years. Um, uh, after three years, his wife got on him for not doing the whole roof, so he ended up cleaning the rest of the roof and, and coating everything. But he was convinced enough that the product worked to uh, put it into their line of distribution and selling it mostly in their, uh, into greenhouses for uh, sidewalks, but also to contractors for roofs, walls, patios, uh, just about anything in Florida that fungus and algae grows on that's a hard surface. Um, this was another roof trial where these roofs were uh, cleaned completely and then just certain areas uh, tried. We did 
basically treated the bottom section of these roofs, not the top, because we wanted to see how the algae came down over it to see whether or not it would grab a hold of those areas and begin to grow. Uh, and as you can see, that, that area stayed completely clean um, after two and a half years. Now, these were some of the first test panels that were used by the chemist uh, in Australia. He actually took these into the jungles of New Guinea, which are known to have some of the, the worst uh, or the best areas to grow fungus and algae. And um, the panels were treated from uh, wood to concrete to painted materials, except the uh, panel number three over from the left to the right, which was left untreated. And uh, you can see how well it grows there. So it allowed him to know how well this product was functioning before we took it out to market. All right. Thank you, Rick. Um, everyone can still hear me all right, correct? Not needed. So hopefully. Okay, good. Um, so now I'm going to show you guys some before and after photos from Hawaii specifically. Um, Hawaii is a great place for this product because there is so much of that moisture um, and the sunlight, which is what these organisms need to grow. So this is over on the east side of the island of Oahu. Um, we did an application in August on a tennis court, as you can see. And this was August 2019, and just to note, he's doing spray for this application of, of these three parts of the tennis court. But like I mentioned before, I want you to note the level of coverage. So you can see some of these areas that are heavier sprayed versus lightly sprayed. Flash forward to four months later, we're in December, and you can see these same spots. Um, it's pretty clear to me you can see where some of that algae and that mold is starting to grow back on the court from what they typically, where they would typically um, power wash. Um, and then the areas where the fungus shield was applied. Um, and you can see that with the areas that have that um, heavy coating, you don't have any of that algae growth. Again, following that a month later, this is back in January, 2020, um, still looking good as the areas around it are starting to get really black again. So they're going to have to go out and power wash those areas, but the areas that were covered with the shield and heavily coated, as, as noted, you can see there isn't that growth. Another site we did a little trial on, this was a small strip, but this was at University of Hawaii Manoa, also on Oahu, um, same time, August. Um, and we, you can look at the center picture, it's a kind of good vision here, but in the top right hand corner of that, you can see the sidewalk and what it typically would look like. Um, and then more towards the bottom, you can see the one strip that they did power washing on. Um, and that's the strip we applied in the fungi shield. So he did a little spray bottle. He had a, a hand sprayer like he would spray Windex or whatever. He didn't use a full backpack. Um, and then followed with the brooms, which you can see in the right picture. Um, but this kind of comes to my point that I was talking about earlier, and um, it depends on what surface you're applying on. So you can see the sidewalk is cement, but it does have those um, kind of rocks and stones in it. So this was a little bit more porous. So in a circumstance like this, you might want to get a heavier coating in order to get that real obvious full effect. But I'll show you again a month later. Picture on the left-hand side is easiest to see. Um, on the right, you can see the more clean area, though it's not white, but it's cleaner than the, obviously, part of the sidewalk that's starting to get that black on it again. Um, and then I want to talk to you guys about examples where this may not work or why it would not work. Um, and I'm going to use a in-person example that I did in Hawaii to kind of show you that. Um, just really quick, some reasons why this, this product might not work as expected would be your surface that you're applying it on is not fully cleaned off. You wanna make sure you get all that algae, all that fungus off of the surface before applying or else you're gonna, you're sealing what you're trying to prevent from building up below that seal. And then in that point, it's still gonna be able to grow. Um, maybe your surface was not dry enough. So this product can be applied to a damp surface, 
but not something that's super, super drenched. Um, ideally, you want to apply it to that dry surface. That way it can fully seal and do its job. Um, an additional thing that might be um, why it wouldn't work would be there wasn't enough time for it to cure before you exposed it. So um, I think Rick talked, <laughs> I was having my technical difficulties during this time, but um, back when we talked about what Thunder Shield is in general, um, it's dry to the touch in one to two hours, but for light traffic, you want to wait a full 24 hours for that product to fully do its job. Um, and then another reason it might not work is it's under constant water, never stopping, never holding up, which applies to this pic these pictures I have here. So in Hawaii, obviously there are a lot of beaches and with that come a lot of shower pads by the beach, you know, rinse your feet off. This is one of the biggest places that you see this algae and this fungus build up um, and you see people slipping on it, you know? It's enough to see everyone slipping around in their bathing suits, but it's also really dangerous. So we were like, wow, this would be the perfect place to test out this product. Um, so we went, we had them power wash this area. Um, but you can see that even after power washing, you still had that years and years and years of buildup. So there may or may not have still been some product or some algae and stuff down before we applied it. Um, and then the biggest reason why this this didn't work in this application here was because these shower pads are never not wet. Whether that somebody just rinsing their feet really quickly or people are out on the beach all day. It's not happening now with everything going on, but typically this is always an area that's underwater. So that's someplace it wouldn't apply. I just thought it's important to include, you know, these really awesome areas where this product would work, but as well as maybe some things where you're thinking, oh, that would be good, but don't necessarily work. So diving into the size, application rate, and the investment on the product. Um, right now, Fundershield comes in two sizes, which you can see on the right-hand side in that picture. Um, we have a one-gallon jug and a five-gallon pail. Um, the one-gallon jug typical list price um, is about $65, and the five-gallon is about $285. Um, and as you can see, I have a little asterisk there to note that depending on where you're located, you know, shipping costs may come into effect there. Um, like I mentioned before, the one gallon typically, typically covers 200 to 300 square feet. Um, and I'm into math and all that kind of stuff, so I like to break it down in my head. Um, so if I do the math on that, about one square feet to treat is, is 26 cents. Um, and then if we talk five-year application, if you break down that one gallon jug, um, that last that would last you five years. That's about thirteen dollar investment per year for that gallon, or if it's the five gallon, fifty seven dollars per year. Um, and I also like to do a little. I pulled this kind of example just in my head to work it out with. But your typical sidewalk is like four feet wide. Um, so if you have a fifty foot long sidewalk, that's 200 square feet of surface area. And so, like we're saying, at the minimum, one gallon will cover that area, right? So that's uh, treating that whole sidewalk for $65 for that one gallon. But if you break that down um, for five years, you're spending $13 to treat that whole 200 square foot sidewalk, maybe outside one of your customer's homes, um, at a park, wherever that may be. I just like to think of kind of relevant examples where it would apply. Um, and that's kind of the gist of everything. I'm, I'm seeing things pop up in the chat, so I'm sure there are questions that Kara can talk to and we can answer those. But again, I apologize about the uh, technical difficulties and I really appreciate everyone joining me and kind of sticking through this craziness. So thank you.